everybody, it's Chugga Conroy! Welcome back to more Pokémon Platinum! Last time, we left the fight area, crossed a small segment of ocean that barely qualifies as a pond, and reached the resort area, where we found it in our humble heart to accept the gift that was a private villa on the coast, complete with its own lake. What, you only see a swimming pool? I have grander visions than that! Have you ever stopped to consider that I am nearly the size of a skyscraper in this universe? Size is relative. And as if I say that my swimming pool is practically a lake, then it's practically a lake. Never minding that I called the ocean barely a pond earlier. It's convenient for me to talk like that. This time, we are leaving the resort area, if Blondie will get out of my way for two seconds, and exploring some new regions to the north. Now, um, don't worry, I'm not gonna subject you to me pulling out the map once again and being like, Oh my god, guys, look at all the stuff we can do in the after game! But I will subject you to hearing me compliment it once again that there is just a lot going on HERE! I got past him, and then I went back for- Why did I even go back there? Anyway, what I was saying before I attempted fate by running around in circles in front of a trainer that could easily fight me, is that- is that I don't have cut! Man, if this is just not the day of interruptions barely two minutes into our trek through this route! <laughs> also, we didn't need that. So yet another interruption, yay! What I was trying to say is that <laughs> this entire island, it's non-linear. Even though I am going through it this particular way, that does not mean that you have to. That gate that is to the north of the fight area, over by where we got the Super Rod, you could take that route and go through this island in a clockwise fashion if you were so inclined. I personally am going through it in a counterclockwise fashion just because that's the way that I've always done things. That's just me, you can do things however you PROTEIN! Yes, you can do things however you protein. <laughs> Sounds like a really lame slogan for some kind of exercise or nutrition company. Also, there's totally a hidden item down here. Don't even pretend like there's not. Yeah, when you see a landmass, it's only three squares. It makes your hidden item senses just go a-tingling. It doesn't happen any other way. So, on this route, there are a lot of new Pokémon that we can now obtain. We've also got some rather formidable stuff waiting for us in the not-too-distant future. So, I think we could use some training. Either of the montage variety, or of just the regular type, whichever this happens to call for. So how about we get started? Or don't, and let me delay things even further. There are more Pokémon than what I led on to earlier that you can obtain with the Super Rod by going back to previous areas. I'm saving those for later because... Oh boy! There are a lot of new wild Pokémon in these areas! Let's wait until we're caught up with those before biting off even more than we can chew, because it's already quite a feast. Starting off, our first new encounter on Route 229 is... Pidgey. <laughs> Why? <laughs> if you're gonna give me a level 50 wild Pidgey in the after game, just save me the extra little inconvenience and give me a wild Pidgeot. Seriously, why not? Okay, in all seriousness, it's pretty average. This is the case with most Pokemon lately, but Pidgey is outclassed by quite a few other flying types we've had access to for ages now. It really is encountered around level 50, so it can immediately get any heart scale move its heart desires. See what I did there. Second is Ledian. You can't give me a wild fully evolved Pidgeot, but you give me this? Sure. It's an inexplicable combination of speed and special defense. Personally, I think it was a generation too late when it was made. If it existed back in red and blue when special was one stat, it might have actually been good at the time of its debut. It, but instead, it's another terrible bug flying type that there's virtually no reason to use. For positives, Mock Punch and Silver One with heart scales, and learning Bug Buzz soon after it's caught is all I've got. Next is Ariados. Yeah, low stats, out of place. It was meant to be an early game way of dealing with grass types. You know the drill. The most interesting thing here is that it will know Psychic when caught, but enjoy using it with 60 special attack and no same type attack bonus! Yay! I don't want to be negative on so many different Pokémon. I really don't. But this route gives me so little to work with. Pidgey's alright, though. Alright in my books, at least. Um, so you- oh, you're not- oh, you're not a trainer! Yeah, I knew that there was somebody on this route that gave a good item, but... 
Somehow I didn't think it was you right away, but I'm very glad that I talked to you anyway, yeah! Oh, take another mix-up of the wisdom that I lacked. You give me two nuggets, and you're a bald guy, but you have no brother. I hereby dub you Nugget Cousin. <laughs> Alright, so we got more unexciting berries over this way that we picked so many times. Let's get back to the new encounters. Or rather, let's get back to the terrible bug-type Pokemon, because that's all that is left in store for us. Volbeat. I don't want to keep saying the same things this whole time, so I'll just skip to what makes it unique and positive. Bug Buzz and Zen Headbutt from the start are neat. Plus, it can learn Roost through TM despite what you would expect from its type. That's kind of cool. It also is one of only two Pokemon, the other being Manaphy, that can naturally learn Tail Glow, which will sharply raise your own special attack stat. That's a pretty neat move. It also is the only Pokemon that naturally learns Flash without the need for the TM70. So if you don't want to go and get another TM70 and you can catch a Volbeat here, get a Heart Scale, you can always reteach it. That can be helpful if you have not yet explored those areas with Flash and you don't have a Pokemon that can help you in that and you can't remember what you used your TM on. Illumise is the same Pokemon, only with its attacking stats flipped and with no ability to learn Tail Glow. Yeah, that's seriously it. And before we go onward, yes, the pronunciation is what I am going with. The anime and Pokedex 3D Pro will back me up on this. I just personally felt the need to emphasize it because not only on the internet do I get criticized for my pronunciation of Illumise, even though multiple sources say that I am correct, it's probably the thing I get corrected on the most in real life. Whenever I mention Illumise, there's always some person I know that has not been there when I've mentioned it before saying, don't you mean Illumise? Though, I can't blame you for thinking it would be pronounced that way, because they should have used the accented E to get that across, and other Pokemon have that accented E, like Flip A Bay. They could have at least retconned it in later games when lowercase letters were part of Pokemon names. But I digress. Surskit and Masquerade. Seriously? You're gonna give me five out of place early game bug type families in a row? Uh, the Sinnoh Naysayers might have their day yet in this adventure. I'll admit though, the ability of Intimidate is great, and it certainly does do at least something to separate it from the enormous pack of terrible bug flying types. Air Slash and Silverwind from the get-go are good too, but man, why does it take it until level 61 to learn Bug Buzz? It's worth mentioning that Surskit and Masquerade have drastically different move pools, so at least see what Surskit can learn before choosing to just go catch a Masquerade or choosing to just let Surskit evolve. Man though, all these terrible bug types can go buzz off! I have earned that, we are done! <laughs> that is everything this route has to offer us! You thought I was harsh on that last route for being too short? Well watch this! Yeah, that's seriously it! We are already on to Route 228! They are laying it on so thick with these new Pokemon in teeny areas, it's not even funny! And I guess also items that just feel like kind of a waste of time for me to pick up, but I can't help it, man! I see items right over there, I gotta go pick them up! It's hard enough for me to not be checking my dowsing machine every two seconds when I make these things, it's just... I got to pick up items that I see, I can't just leave them there, because if I don't pick them up, then I won't have them. It just bugs me, I don't know. Uh, let's head over this way. Is there nothing? There it is, calcium! I get the feeling that we're gonna get a Carbos and a Zinc and an HP up in our near future, because it's typically the way things are, where we find more than one vitamin, the others are hiding nearby. So we got a house right here. And we got this guy. That badge. It's from Sunny Shore's gym. You've been to that port town then. Would would you lend an ear to this old man's tale? <laughs> nah. Ah, pay me no heed then. I only hope to unburden myself of some guilt. Good guilt trip, buddy! Good, good guilt trip! Shoulda yelled the no at you. Ah oh, well, let's talk to you. No. I shouldn't burden you with this. My grandson grew up in that city by the sea. Worn down by trying to live up to his parents' expectations, he found refuge in tinkering with machines. I wonder even now if I should have taken him in and raised him myself, though I'm not certain if that would have been a good choice or not. I don't think anyone could say. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said any of this to you. 
Piecing that together with what we heard back in Sunny Shore City from that old couple. This man is Cyrus's grandfather. And even though our quest to stop Cyrus from obtaining Giratina's power and erasing the universe all ended a while ago, this adds much more to his character. And this guy was not here in Diamond and Pearl. So in addition to there being no distortion world, no Cyrus speech scene, there being less encounters with Cyrus in Diamond and Pearl, you also have this. Platinum did so much for the story that they were trying to tell in Diamond and Pearl. In Diamond and Pearl, it was trying to be a big epic story, but it didn't have all the elements there. Platinum gave it what it needed. And because of this, in addition to everything else that we've seen, all the additions to the core gameplay, these this whole Northern Island, yeah, it existed in Diamond and Pearl, but in Platinum, you got the Battle Frontier, you had this extra bit of story, you had, this entire island was totally revamped even. It didn't have this palm tree volcanic look to it and the roots were nowhere near as elaborate. They did, like went all out on changing this place. That villa back in the resort, that didn't exist. So much was added and we haven't even seen the half of it yet. It is for these reasons that Platinum, I think, is the best third version they have ever done. I know that Emerald was the only other one that added a ton of new stuff, but I think this far surpasses Emerald in what it did for Diamond and Pearl compared to what Emerald did for Ruby and Sapphire. It's amazing. In the way of story, it took nothing and it made it into something, and at the same time laid the groundwork for things that would follow in the Pokemon series. Despite this being a remake or a rehash or whatever you want to call it, it is important to the history of Pokemon, and it changed a lot more than any other third version ever did. That's why I like it so much, and I think I've been negative enough for one video to go on a positive rant here for a little while. Anyway though, there are new encounters on Route 228 just like there were on Route 229. And after just this huge explosion of positivity out of me, now that I can finally go into all the reasons why I think Platinum is such an important game to Pokemon, after five scathing bios in a row, will Diglett and Dugtrio be able to break that streak and keep it from becoming a six in the middle of all this positivity? Yes. Yes, they will. This is what I've been waiting for. Dugtrio is known as the revenge killer for a reason. That blistering speed is enough reason to want it, but man, Earthquake as soon as it's caught, access to Slash, Night Slash, Sucker Punch, and Fissure, it's so good as a switch in, and that ability is downright crippling on electric types in multiplayer if it is switched in successfully. It's not just good, it's great. More evolution items that I don't even need. I guess that one could be kind of useful to you. There's a few Pokemon that evolve with the Shiny Stone. Roserade, uh, sorry, Roselia into Roserade and uh, Toga Tick into Toga Kiss. I'm sorry, I lost my focus there. The fact that we find Sandstorm of all TMs in this route is just really funny to me. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> let's, uh, I, I don't need to switch Supernova into lead. It'll come out automatically. What am I thinking? Double battle time! People, nature, Pokemon, harmony is essential! Are you getting worn out from all the running you've done? You sure sound worn out from standing next to that guy all day. Next, Cacnea and Cacturn. They may seem awkward at first glance and, well, they kind of are. They're glass cannons with respectable strength on both attacking fronts. In the way of good moves, there's Sucker Punch, Needle Arm, Destiny Bond, and Revenge in there. I kinda like these guys. I know they're not the greatest, most stellar Pokemon out there, but there's just something cool about a Pokemon that benefits from Sandstorms without being the right type. It's right at home on a team that takes advantage of that, and it gives it variety. And speaking of Sandstorms, next up is Hippowdon! The fully evolved Sandstorm Summoner is here! Everything we said a long time ago about Hippopotas still stands. It's good at what it does, but it might be tough to fit it in if you're not going for a Sandstorm team, and really... Why would you wait this late to get the centerpiece of a Sandstorm team? Getting through these quickly, next is Poliwag and Poliwhirl, another split evolution. This family all have the ability to use Hypnosis, somewhat of a rarity among their kin of water types. Unfortunately, Hypnosis is only 60% accurate in Platinum, so it's nowhere near the zaniness of 70% accurate that it was in Diamond and Pearl. Oh, yeah, and options, split evolution, right. 
They are Polyrath, a water fighting type, something you don't see every day. It's a jack of all trades, both in stats and in being a mixed attacker. It learns what you'd expect. The other is Politoed, less of a jack of all trades and more of a special focus Pokemon. Again, it's pretty much what you'd expect other than the hypnosis thing. Remember that Politoed, though, cannot get Drizzle for its ability in Sinnoh, so don't use it for that reason. Otherwise, you'll be very disappointed, and it would also come with a high recommendation from me rather than just an okay. And next up is Whiskash. Oh, as always, gotta love that water ground type, Surf and Earthquake combo. We've previously talked about Barboach, and this is just another chance to get it. Last is Sand Slash. I always dread talking about this guy. I want him to be good, but it's just so outclassed, doesn't work all that well. You might look at it and think, he can't be that bad. His Earthquake probably hits harder than Doug Trio's, right? Yeah, it does. Once you use a TM on it, why does it have to be that way? It's slow, it's super fragile against pretty much any respectable special move. I don't get it, it wouldn't be overpowered if it learned it by level up. Its level up moves are trash, or rather, slash. Yeah, that is the strongest move it gets by leveling up. In fact, the only damaging ground type move it gets through level up is Sand Tomb. The only possible explanation for it being this terrible in the fourth region is that somebody at Game Freak just hates it. That has to be it. And I bet they sit between the guy who hates Farfetch'd and the desk of the guy who used to hate Flareon, because I guess it's not really as bad now. But still, Sandshrew is so cute. Sandslash is cool looking. Let it be good. Anyway, back to the battle. If you haven't noticed by now, the combination of Bodhi and Supernova and doubles is great. I mean, yeah, I can't use Earthquake on account of Supernova being unable to fly, but with this Sandstorm going on, Bodhi's immune to it due to its ground type, and Supernova with its magic guard, yeah, it's good. You're A-OK! -okay. You're not tired at all. The world is full of Pokemon and all sorts of trainers, and I got stuck with this guy. Protecting Pokemon and nature! Think of what that means! <laughs> Sounds like half the people that I hang out with in my relationships with them. <laughs> Alright, so, into another house! Are we gonna get even more lore on the Sinnoh region? No, we're not. Uh, your quest for power has brought you here. Well, let me reward your passion with some absolutely astounding news! Oh. They're the ultimate moves! Shall I teach them to your Pokémon? To which Pokémon should I teach a move? This move, Tutor! If you bring him any starter Pokémon, he will teach them a variation of Hyper Beam. Grass-type starters get Frenzy Plant, Fire-type starters get Blast Burn, and Water-type starters will get Hydro Cannon. These are very powerful moves. They require you to recharge the turn after they're used, so typically they're best for finishing a battle, or just finishing off a Pokemon in general if you're playing with the shift battle style. I don't know if I wanna put that on my Torterra. I could take advantage of it with the shift battle style. It's not like I haven't done a Hyper Beam like that before, but I kinda have my sight set on another move that I would want to eventually teach my Torterra. Well, you know. Now that I say it like that, it's not like I can't just reteach it by going back to this move tutor whenever I feel like. If it's a more powerful move than what I've got, I might as well go for it. That's what I think. And besides, it gives me a method of attacking that isn't recoil, even though it's grass type, so we can do that. It's also special, which is, I guess, also kind of nice. Gives me a little bit more variety in my attacking. Yeah, let's go for it. Probably gonna get rid of Crunch for that. It hasn't served me all that well, and I have plenty of other ways of dealing with Psychic types and Ghost types and just everything else in general that I'd want to use it for. I've said my piece on it before about how Dark and Ghost might as well be the exact same type offensively and how that really grinds my gears a little bit. I wish they would change that. I really wish that they would. Cause when they, I heard that they were gonna make changes to the type chart. Um, that's one of the things I was hoping most for. There is a hidden item up there. There are no two ways about it. It is there. I don't care what anyone says. I am going up there right this second, and I am getting that item. Unless, of course, I bike too slowly. That would kind of prevent me. Uh, nothing, nothing. No wait, wait, really? Wow! Y you're serious right now? 
Dang, I thought Veilstone City was a jerk with its rock formation that looks like this. This place is even bigger jerk. It doesn't even taunt you with an item. It just taunts you with the promise that there may be an item up there and then gives you nothing for your troubles. Please don't hold anything back. You don't gotta worry about a thing. I have come much too far and done way too much to hold anything back. Other than the fact that Bodhi is almost out of health. I just realized I probably should have healed up in the middle of battles. Uh, well, it's a darn good thing this isn't a challenge run. Also, Sandslash, your anatomy looks terrible. That claw that is so much bigger than the other one, even though it really shouldn't be that big of a difference in distance from the camera. I don't know. Platinum's got some damn good sprites. I like a lot of them. They're really cool. Heck, my Torterra has got an awesome sprite. You wouldn't know it from this angle, because all you get to see is a tree and some spikes, but from the front, it's pretty darn nice looking. That Sandslash is not one such Pokemon that has a nice sprite. Uh-huh. Yeah, let's try out our new Frenzy Plant. Wow. Okay, I, I, I know it might seem weird that I'm overwhelmed by that, but that's not a move that you see used in multiplayer, and that was primarily where I spent a lot of my time back in the Diamond Pearl Platinum days. And those weren't really moves that I taught my Pokemon as a result of that, so seeing it in action like that is kind of cool. It looks really good. You are a trainer. I do not trust you in the slightest. Oh, wow, we're already at the gate. Huh. You're... Okay, good. I can sneak right past you. I've kind of been doing a lot of fighting, so I kind of want to take it a little bit easy. There's a protector right there, which you can use, use to evolve a Rhydon into Rhyperior. We've already had one of these for quite some time, so again, they're just giving us two of every evolution item. I know you're capable of looking the other way. Please do it. Thank you. Let's go down here. And we got a cave entrance that was not present in Diamond and Pearl. And it's a perfect square. And it's got an elemental item in the middle of it. This is what is known as the Rock Peak Chamber. If you have access to a certain event and yada, 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 I think you know where I'm going with this. If you have access to that long dead event that you can no longer get, in this cave, you can battle the legendary Pokemon, Regirock. Incredibly strong and resilient when it comes to physical attacks. This dishes out damage and it takes it like a champ. In fact, Regirock's defense is tied for being the highest stat held by any legendary Pokemon, tied only with Regice's special defense. Its attack is not all that bad either if you take the defense aside from that. You can only obtain it with that event, of course, and it's also level 30 instead of the usual 40. Rock isn't the greatest defensive type, but it's the stats that you would get this for. It starts with Stomp, Rock Throw, Curse, and Superpower in its moveset, which are certainly not bad. Gets Ancient Power at 33 and, oh boy, Iron Defense at 41. It has awesome capabilities to tank, and it'll do decent damage as well. I feel like I'm just repeating myself here, but that is what Regirock stands for and not much else. And with that, we have just a little bit left of this route that we haven't seen up to this point. I can't believe I actually made it up there. I thought I needed more room than that. Nothing? Okay. It really is just so hard to not do that. That is a trap, and whoever designed that is a jerk. And you're brilliant, because you got me good. <laughs> okay, you better have been guarding a damn good item, otherwise I am going to be furious. I know that this area loops back around to Cyrus's grandfather's house, so this is a pathway that we could have gone to otherwise. He didn't have anything good at all behind him, did he? No, this is just a shortcut for you, isn't it? Isn't it? Let's just make absolutely sure. Nothing. Nothing. Nope, nothing at all. Nothing at all. And, yeah, that's really it. Well, that designer really got me good with that. I got trolled, and for no good reason. Let's just go up here and go back to the center of the route, and I think that's about everything. We have explored two new routes. We are still not to the next town, and we won't be for quite some time. So I think we've kind of hit a good halfway point or so. Next time on Pokemon Platinum, we head out to... What is an inexplicably grassy route right next to this ash-covered land, even though we can quite clearly see the ash landing on the other side? See you guys then.